David's mighty men, he took the people that nobody wanted to be around. He took the people that owed money. He took the people that were depressed. He took, you know, like that had all of the problems, the people that nobody said could do anything. And he brought them around and he spent time with them. And in whatever he did with them, whatever the courage and the confidence and the wars that he wanted in himself, he, you know, taught them and they in turn changed, you know, changed the world and did amazing feats. everyone. Welcome to Cultural Catalyst, where we teach you how to live fully alive, co-labor with God, and change the world. And today I have Jamie and Marty Pronovos, and they are, Jamie is my daughter, and this is my son-in-law, and they have a church on the coast around the Eureka area, actually Fortuna. If you're, this is, if you guys know, if you've heard of the famous California giant redwoods, they live in the giant redwoods. And they have uh, they they have a school there called Bethel School of Supernatural Discipleship. I'll give you a little introduction, Marty and Jamie, and uh, school ministry. Uh, the the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry has uh, used them for the last I don't know at least ten years, probably longer. Thirteen. Thirteen, 13 years. Yeah. And what we've done with our students is any student that has uh, that that needs close one on one discipleship. Our Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry was never designed for that, so we helped them to develop a school for one-on-one discipleship, and you guys have done a fantastic job. You co-pastor together a church there on the coast, and you've been doing that for how many years? Since 1999, so well, that's a, 24 years here. That's a few years. So thank yeah. you so much for being on the Cultural Catalyst podcast, webcast, and uh, tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, yeah. We originally thought we were going to be on the coast for like four years. I think that yeah. was the original plan. And 24 years later, we're still here. Wow. Started as the youth pastor at, uh, at the time it was called Calvary Christian Center. And Steve uh, Backlund was, went to church Steve there. Steve Backlund, if, if you're there. part of BSSM, Mark Brooks was uh, the... Jen Johnson. Jen Johnson. Jen Johnson. There we go. Church, A little plug for church. Bethel Music. Yeah. Yep. Mike and Lynn Chandler, who are on staff. Oh, yeah, guys, absolutely. So, yeah, quite a few people. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit of the Weaverville of the coast. Absolutely. Because of the people that came out yeah. from here. So, so yeah, so we were youth pastors for six years and then became senior pastors in 2005 and uh, have seen all kinds of changes over the years. But uh, we're back full time at the church that we started at. And uh, we're excited to be just focusing on one church and the school. Well, you saying, should tell that story because they, they wouldn't understand what you meant by that statement. Yeah. So we, over time, we we started, I, probably not the right word is collecting churches, but we started uh, having churches that needed help. And so uh, myself and uh, my friend Willie, uh, we started um, s- sort of helping with these other churches. But when the pandemic hit, it was really hard to pastor four or five churches with minimal people. And yeah. so we decided to come back to Fortuna, which is really home for us. And it's just been really exciting to reconnect with people we've had relationship with. How long time. have you guys been married? We've been married 25 years. So, wow. Yeah. yeah August no, 10, I think we've been married 96, 26 years. 26 years. <laughs> 26 years. Wow. And so. you have how many kids? We have three, three kids. Yeah. Two biological, one adopted. That's that's Misha, that's, Micah, and Alana. That's a beautiful. We story. have one amazing grandson. Yes, we do. He is the best thing that's <laughs> ever happened. <laughs> Jamie, I was waiting to stimulate that out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured you were going to jump in any minute and, <laughs> and you yeah. tell forgot that. to ask about the most important person in our life. That would be Malachi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So hey, so 
But, you know, what was it like coming out of the pandemic as a, you know, co-leading this church? I, I know that you guys were on the coast, which was very um, strict about the, the closing of churches and wearing a mask and yeah. all, all, all the things that went with COVID. You guys really had no choice but to close your church. I mean, there you guys were kind of like the Australian lockdown people, the New Zealand lockdown people, right? Like yeah. not 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 by your choice, but by yeah. the government's choice on the coast there. Yeah, we were definitely uh, pretty restricted. Thankfully, we have a sheriff in Humboldt County who's a believer, and uh, he told us that he considered us essential. So, oh, so we were good. able to have a little bit of leeway. Um, but it was hard. We, we probably lost, I mean, yeah, we probably lost about half of our congregation just to people staying at home and getting used to doing things online and not being in connection and relationship. So it was, it was challenging. What's it like reemerging now, Jamie? What, what? Um, I would say it's super challenging uh -huh. um, now still, you know, there's, I don't think that people are over, I think we're creating a new normal. So, you know, people got really used to watching TV on church and, and I think that social media gives us this feeling that, you know, well, I don't actually need to physically go somewhere. I can just kind of be there. Um, and so it, it really has, you know, it really has changed. But for us, church is about community. It's about who you're sitting next to. Um, you know, so it, it really, to me, it's like, and now in this day and age, honestly, we're like, you know, the value of going to church really, for at least in Humboldt for us, is like, you know, you can listen to the best sermon you want to online. You can listen to any sermon you want to. I mean, that's the difference between 20 years ago or 30 years ago and now is, you know, I, I can listen to anybody that I want to at any time. Um, but I can't have community with somebody without being present with them. And so, you know, for us, church is all about, I'm not going to church because I need it. I'm going to church because the guy next to me needs me in his life too. And so yeah. that's the part that we're really working to, you know, go back to our original roots of just, you know, like, hey, you're here to be here to be with us and to, and to be present. And, you know, you can, yeah, I mean, I, there's really great preachers out there. So, you know, there's way better preachers than us. Um, but you can't find family that way. That's not the way you do family. So it's beautiful. You know, when we were thinking through our school of ministry, and at the time we were 2,600 students, and we have yeah. students coming, brand new believers, yeah. some, you know, just off of drugs, some just coming out of immoral lifestyles. And we were like, man, we want to help these people, but there's just no way with the one on 60, you know, we have revival groups, one on yeah. 60. Yeah. There's, there's no way that a person who needs that kind of level of care is going to actually be successful in our environment. Yeah. And when we were starting to think about how do we solve that problem, this is 13 years ago, mm -hmm. yeah. we were, we're like, who do we know that, you know, out of the churches we're networked with, who do we know that could actually help these people? And you guys, uh, I mean, your names came up not just from me, but from our teams because of your guys' story. Jamie, you had a pretty big crash uh, several years ago, 16 years ago or something like that. And that sort of set in motion a whole bunch of tools that you kind of clawed your way back to normality, <laughs> if I could say it yeah. descriptively, yeah. you know, descriptively. And, and out of that, you, you have learned a healing process that you actually have been using with other people, your, both your testimony and your tools together because of what the two of you and really the, your, your whole family went through. Really, I, got, I, I was included in that journey too. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about that story, and then, tell, and then I'd love to, for you guys to talk about how that place of pain has actually become a tool chest in which you're helping really hundreds of other people and have for the last many years. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my story is uh, I've had anxiety my whole life. And so, but um, uh, several, many years ago, um, it got to the place where I, 
I was having panic attacks every day. I wasn't sleeping. I was getting up 15, 16 times a night. And it got to the place where literally I wasn't coming out of my room or wasn't getting out of bed. And so, and we, um, we did a whole bunch of, you know, different things. I obviously, you know, we're super blessed because you're our dad. So, um, we, you know, we tried absolutely everything under the sun. Um, so I, I mean, I had counseling, I've had Soto as I've had all kinds of, you name it, I've had it. Um, you name who prayed for me, they did. Um, <laughs> the and best. So, huh? The best people the best. In, best. in our movement prayed for you. Yes, yeah. there is. Yeah. You literally, you name it, I had it. Um, and so, but it was a major process mm -hmm. for me to get better. And there was, um, out of it, I learned that you need to minister to your body, your soul, and your spirit. And so um, that really is the foundation of what we do at BSSD. Um, it really is the foundation of how we teach people um, how to make things, how to make it through, how to uh, give a lot of tools. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, you know, classes that are just for that, that just teach you how to separate things out, how to know exactly what is what. That's oftentimes you know, people have no idea. They know something's wrong because <laughs> yeah. they're not doing well. <laughs> exactly. Like, well, what's wrong? They're like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good start. Um, so, but you know, I've, I've been there because I, I didn't know it was wrong either. And I had a three-part problem. I had a, a body, soul, spirit problem. And I think in the beginning, we thought it was 100% a spirit problem. But, you know, I found out that it was a, a three-part problem. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, I remember, so, you know, some of those challenging times when you were that year, you're kind of spending in your bedroom. And I remember praying for you on the phone and your hands mm -hmm. and face would be suddenly covered with gold dust. Am I exaggerating or is that, is that true? No, story? Yeah, absolutely. So like, so beautiful in that the Lord was like, I, I am with you. Like you are mm -hmm. going to get through this. Yeah. It, it's really hard. I, I'm a, I, uh, you know, a D type, a type, however you want to say intense, you know, personality, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how high the mountain is. I can climb it no matter what's going to happen. Um, so, you know, when you're laying in your bed, and, you know, at the time we had two little kids and you can't, I, like, I literally I couldn't be mom, couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, I literally could not come out of my room. Um, you know, I remember looking at Marty telling him, you know, the person that you married doesn't exist <laughs> and I don't think that she'll ever come back. You know, and that was, <laughs> it sounds dramatic yes. now. <laughs> well, that, that. We have to we have to confess that you and your father are both drama drama kings and queens. So, <laughs> but hey, in the but it, you know, I mean, it, Scary. it, it took years mm. to to yeah. really come up with the tools to come out of it. You know, and and to come out of it now, I would say I'm a heck of a lot better than I ever was going yeah. in, and we've gone through ten times worse situations. Mm -hmm. I, I live in ten times worse situations. I don't tank. I don't, you know, I, you never find me in my room. I, you know, so, um, but the reality in the, in that time and in that moment was really, I mean, I, I, you know, even Marty believed that I was probably never going to be the same mm -hmm. again. Yeah, you know, I mean, sure. it, I, I just, I thought that that person just was gone. She Marty, what kind of role did you play? Like there'll be a lot of people watching this that are in that place, honestly. Yeah. What kind of role, like, how were you, how were you, I know how you were doing in the beginning, not, not great. Not right? good. <laughs> yeah. how, no. how, how were you, what did you learn that helped Jamie along the way? And not just Jamie, but you start having some anxiety too. Of course, your wife is yeah. like, hey, I'm going yeah. crazy and I'm, you're never going to have a healthy woman back, you know? Yep. Yeah. I always describe it as that was a time when the Lord started teaching me about his love. He would, I would go into my garage, which was like the least clean and organized space, but it was the only place I could be where the kids wouldn't see me falling apart. And invariably I'd either have somebody call me or, or God would just meet me there. And he just started loving on me and, and showing me basically giving me the strength to get up and, and just do pretty normal tasks, but 
you know, they helped keep my sanity. So I, I, I vacuumed probably a hundred <laughs> times a day. Um, you know, I was just taking on a whole new role with the kids, helping them with homework. I mean, the first 11 years of our marriage, Jamie did all of that stuff and went to the PTA meetings and all that stuff. And now all of a sudden I'm, I'm in that role and I'm trying to keep her feeling safe and out of anxiety world and, and being dad and mom and, well, and pastoring, a church, and pastoring a church at the same time, which is really hard to preach faith when you're, <laughs> when you're struggling with that yourself. So, exactly. um, but I had great, I mean, you were a huge help in helping me understand what was going on. Danny was, Danny Silk was a great resource during that time. And, yeah. um, but yeah, the Lord was just building up a resiliency in me that I didn't know was there. No, so you, just, got, you got a bunch right. of, you know, your congregation, your, mm-hmm. your, your school. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, you've got a lot of healthy people around you too. So let's, let's not make this like you you're, have a rehab center, but, yeah. but mm-hmm. at the same time, you know, the Lord sends people to you mm-hmm. because of these incredible tools that you learn Yeah, that you, you have an extraordinary amount of people who've come to you who are hurt. Yeah. Either we sent them to you, but yeah. also, you're just attracting this this group of people who yeah. have been yes. hopeless yeah. and who have yeah. been living a, a totally broken life. Yeah. And they hear somebody, you know, they hear your guy's story, whether it's a family story or whether it's an individual story, and they're like, oh, someone will understand me. Mm-hmm. The, these folks will understand me. So yeah. what kind of, like, take us through a little bit of the process. You, you know, you meet a Jamie in her crisis, and you're like, okay, what's the, what's some of the first things that you you do, and and what's what's the journey look like at BSSD well, and at what, what your house your church is now called what? It's called Shiloh, Shiloh Family Church. Yeah, Shiloh Family Church. Yeah. Tell tell us about yeah. that, guys. Yep. Um. So I, I think that the first thing that is really important is first of all because um because of my testimony, I firmly believe that you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Like, so, because in hope. Yeah. yeah, because it's like, there is, you know, I know that if I can get better, you can get better. Um, when, it, you know, in BSSD, I remember teaching one morning and um, we had one class that was, uh, it was everybody else's least favorite class and my favorite one because they were really hard. Mm. <laughs> they, uh, they, they did everything they weren't supposed to do. Um, in BSSD, we do, we, we get sent, um, we get sent the challenge, the, you know, the ones that like to challenge and I love yeah. a challenge. Yeah. So if you're, if you're boring, you don't interest me, but if you, you know, if you've got like 5 million things going on and, and, um, you got a problem, I'm like, Ooh, you're really interesting. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, it, I was preaching that morning and, um, I felt like the Lord told me you guys are like David's mighty men. Like we, we gather. So David, David's mighty men, he took the people that nobody wanted to be around. He took the people that owed money. He took the people that were depressed. He took, you know, like that had all of the problems, the people that nobody said could do anything. And he brought them around and he spent time with them. And in whatever he did with them, whatever the courage and the confidence and the wars that he wanted in himself, he, you know, taught them and they in turn changed, you know, changed the world and did amazing feats. And so that's what I see in BSSD is I see like, I I love it. It's like, come sit, come sit with me. You know, if you, if you have had a rough time, if you've had, you know, it doesn't matter how you got here, you know, we get, you know, uh, you know, our, we, we have adopted and, you know, our youngest has a very traumatic past. So it does not matter if if it comes, it was something done to you or something that you've chosen or, uh, you know, when it comes to mental health, that's, you know, usually neither here nor there. It's not, you know, something that you've chosen. Um, but it's like, come, come be here because I know that there's something that God puts you on the planet to be great. And I know that if I can gather you around, if we can get you through your hard season, you're unstoppable because you've done things that most people haven't even thought of. So I I look at every year at BSSD and I go, that's what we're doing. 
I, I am here creating this place. You know, Paul says, come follow me like I follow Christ. And, and so for me, it's like, come, come be radical, come own your stuff, come be honest about what's going on in your life. Come use these tools, you know, come figure this out because you're here to change the world. And honestly, right now the world needs you to, you know, the world's full of people who are hurt. Yeah. They're full of broken homes. They're full of, you know, I mean, 50 yeah. years ago, you know, mom and dad, you know, were together and everybody went to church, you know, mm-hmm. fast forward 50 years from now, it does not look the same. You know, we have a, mm-hmm. we have a mental illness, uh, crisis crisis yeah Yeah, and it doesn't matter where you're at you know and so to me it's like as a church we need to figure this out we you know and to me we've got the best tools on the planet because i've got you know the world doesn't have jesus yeah and that's a huge missing factor you know it's like there there's a huge uh but the church didn't always necessarily believe in some of the things that, you know, some of the science behind what happens Mm -hmm. in mental illness, some of just the basics, you know, they were like, I'm, we're going to pray for you. And if you, if, if prayer doesn't work, I don't know what else to do for you. Yeah. And, um, at BSSD, we, we combine those two and that becomes our powerhouse because you, you you combine the, the power of Jesus and the wisdom of God in, how to deal with all three levels of your humanity. Yeah. So one of the, the, one of the big sayings that you'll hear me say is pray for a miracle, live with a plan. And that's I can't a, remember if that's a you saying or if that's no, a me saying. That's a you saying. That's me. Sweet. I got a good one. Um, There's your book title. The, yeah. <laughs> so, um, pray for a miracle, live with a plan means, first of all, you know, we never stop. We never stop believing for a miracle. And in, and in a lot of people that it, you know, when you're talking about mental health or you're talking about things, there's places where you, you need a miracle. Yeah. You know, um, I was talking to a, psychiatr- a psychiatrist the other day and found out that um, your brain actually, uh, when it gets trauma, it actually causes inflammation. Like there's actual physical things that are happening to the brain that they just found out. So, you know, we're talking about like your, your actual physical body in mental illness actually has th- places and things that needs to be healed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, so we never stop praying for that. We always are looking for Jesus in that. We're always, you know, he's the, he's the grace changing, finding thing. And in that also, we give you a ton of tools so you know we split it up and we go okay you've got your body your soul and your spirit and you know the first thing that people have to wrap around especially when you're christian is um that you have a body a soul and a spirit yes so it it, uh, that sounds stupid but um when i tell people sometimes my best solution is i need to go ride my horses because my soul is low you know, they'll go, no, you were supposed to pray, you know, you're supposed to sit in your closet and pray or worship. And I'm like, that, that was part of the first key that I actually learned. Actually, the two main keys that I learned were actually how to take care of my body and how to take care of my soul. Because when I was crashed, we were taking care of my spirit really well. Yeah. Like, I, that's, you know, when I'm saying like, we had the best of the best, like, I don't know who had better than mm. me. Um, but the other uh, the other elements that helped was actually going to the doctor <laughs> which i was not a fan of and um but ended up becoming life-changing and necessary and minister and that part was ministry to my body there was some body issues mm-hmm. that i had that um had to be taken care of yeah and then the game another game changer was my soul yeah. it was uh you know i I thought that all of life was about, you know, work and finding out that, no, you actually need to have things that you do that you, you know, that you do because you just enjoy them. Mm -hmm. And you, when you create this ecosystem, so really it's about creating a new ecosystem um, and learning like the value of things like, you know, when somebody says, okay, you know, when they come to me and it's like, I got, you know, I got a this, this, and this problem. The first things I will start to do is I'm going to start to break it down and figure out where's your main problem coming from. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, I'll say, I'll say simple things like, like they will come in with, 
you know, I've got demons talking to me. And the first question that I ask them is, so, you know, are you sleeping? And they, they treat me like I'm not listening to them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm very much listening to you. You know, like I'm very much in tune to what you're asking me. But what I need to know is, um, are you sleeping at night? Well, no, I'm not sleeping. Okay. Have you been eating? No, but you don't understand. I've got, you know, and I'm like, yes, I, I'm hearing you. I totally understand. But the problem is, is that if you don't sleep, um, the studies show that, you know, if you spend 24 hours of lack of sleep, you are the equivalent of a drunk person. I'm not saying you're drinking. Yeah. I'm saying mentally, yeah. you are the equivalent of a drunk person. So if, I'm not sure if you've ever had to reason with a drunk person before exactly. or had a conversation with exactly. them. Exactly. Um, yeah. But it's not possible. That you're going to hallucinate. Yeah. yeah. It, it, well, and you're not the, you know, you're not mentally, we don't realize how important it is to mentally think straight. Yeah. Like when you're under high anxiety, um, you literally aren't thinking straight. Like I know you think you're thinking straight and I know that you feel like you're thinking straight. But when that anxiety comes down, you'll look at yourself and you go, oh, my gosh, I was crazy. You know, and it, and and how do I know that? Because I've done that 500 million times. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> it's like. Well, and it's cool. Cool testimony is we just had the students come back from break yesterday. They were at our house and we were just asking them how their break mm -hmm. went and they're recognizing their own triggers. And it was awesome to see the testimonies of how their anxiety has come down because they're recognizing what was creating the anxiety to begin with. So, yeah. so those are, you come away going, Hey, we're doing something here. We're, we're making an impact. So you guys, yeah. uh, did you have any books that you'd recommend, uh, places for people to go to get help? And then, uh, thirdly, um, how do they get to be SSD in, in kind of in that order? Like you have any, I know Jamie and uh, Marty, both of you, you've spent a lot of time researching because when you're desperate, desperate mm -hmm. times call for desperate measures. So, you know, we're going to have a lot of desperate people that are going to watch this. This is going to go viral. Um, you know, we only have three minutes left. So I want to make sure we give some, we mm -hmm. give people a, a few tools before we, you know, yeah. it's not like, okay, great. I found some here. Mama. It's like, okay, yeah. like, <laughs> how do we, uh, how do we how do we help some folks yeah yeah so um if you are it, i think it, it kind of will depend on the situation a little bit um uh caroline leaf is amazing yeah you know as far as um like who switched off my brain yeah, um good. she does a really great job if you are um someone who has got a real trauma past or you're working with someone in trauma um, there are, there's a couple people out there. Um, uh, Panic to Power is a great book. Panic yes. to Power is a great book. Uh, Lucille, yes. I don't know, Basham, is yeah. it? Basham? Lucille? Basset, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a great book. Yeah. yeah. Um, we use your book, Spirit, Spirit Wars. Wars. Spirit Wars is a great time. book for the spiritual mm -hmm. side of, of it, especially. Yeah. There's some really good specific, some of the best stuff that I've learned lately is, uh, through reading trauma books. So good. So, and learning what trauma does and trauma triggers and um that's probably been some of the most groundbreaking stuff for me to understand so um and those are all written by psychiatrists yeah um so they're a little they're not easy reads yeah. you know um it, but um they're really life-changing reads if you're if you're into that yeah and if you have somebody in your family or someone you're working with that is really needs some somebody who has you know professional experience like that yeah what, absolutely um how yeah. would people get in touch with you guys for bssd you've got a wonderful school it's nine months long it's yeah, life changing and transforming huh it's six oh months six now. months now yeah yeah, yeah we and, start in october and we go till march um you can get a hold of us at bssd.coast.org we just one more time uh, bssd coast ssdcoast.org got it okay and that's where we actually have a new website going up so they can check out information there that's great and that's probably the best way yeah we have some facebook pages but you can access all that stuff through the bssdcoast.org website 
And you guys also, Jamie, you have a Facebook page that you post some profound yeah. stuff on there all the time. Yeah. Is that, yeah. uh, how do they get in, how do they get that? So, uh, my Facebook page is just Jamie Valentin Pronovo. Um, and, uh, it's open to the public. So, you know, everything that I post, you can see, and I, I frequently, uh, post on, on things that are help, uh, you know, on yeah. keys on, um, you know, if something's going on in the air and the supernatural, I frequently will post and say, you know, this is, this was what's happening with me and this is how to, uh, do something about it. So we're really big on doing something about it. Yeah. And you're in the midst of writing a book, which will, I am. as soon as we figure out the title for that, we'll start, we'll start <laughs> yeah. letting people know about that. That's right. Yep. So yes, pretty soon, hopefully the best book that you will read on this subject will be mine. <laughs> That would be amazing. So, Marty, why don't yeah. you close us with a prayer? Would you, would you just pray for the people that will be watching us? Yeah. So, Lord, we just thank you that you are the solution to every problem that we have. And, Father, I pray that you would give each person listening um, just the grace to be able to connect with you in a new way today and to find the peace and the comfort that they're looking for and to find hope, most importantly. Um, that you are there and that you're going to meet the need. And uh, we just thank you for providing yourself to us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thank you so very much for being on here. That was a great yeah. interview. We need to do another interview, maybe a more in-depth interview, where we talk That'd maybe about just uh, some plans for people, because I think it's going to stimulate people going, hey, I need some more. And, yeah. And, uh It'd be great yeah. to do, you know, hey, here's a here's a three step process of spirit, soul and body, kind of yep. an overview where people could just get hungry to and get a yep. little bit of hope, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Our school is essentially a six month freedom plan. I yeah. mean that's that's what we do. So. I'm very well, proud of you guys. Always, huh? I'm very it's proud cool. of you guys. Thank you. Well, it, there's like yeah, there and then there would be easy ways to teach them how because we like I teach them how first of all what your body, soul, spirit would it's responsible for in each thing, and then uh, we have them start rating themselves between one to ten in what areas that they're at, so that we know like okay this is the, this is your first focus area like your spirit's at a ten your body's at a two okay so that's where we're going to start spinning. A, a sporadity, a spirit-led strategy for your whole Very man. Much. Gotta let you go. Hey, love you guys. Thank you so yeah, much for being you. on. And, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you.